But let's not get too distracted by how nice this is and how we were able to generalize simple harmonic motion and work that out from scratch because I promised you an amazing coincidence in the time which we eventually found. Why these numbers are amazing is if you compare them to a satellite going around the Earth, but a rather unusual satellite. Most satellites are a fair way above our heads. The International Space Station is 400 kilometers up. Imagine a satellite which was at grazing altitude. So there's no atmosphere, there's no mountains to get in the way. If you had a satellite as low as possible, so it is orbiting around. So I'm going to draw it right down here, right? So it's orbiting right down at the Earth's surface. It is exactly one Earth radius away from the middle. If you look at the amount of time a Earth grazing satellite would take to go from one pole all the way around exactly to the other, it's 2530.5 seconds. The time it takes a satellite to go halfway around the planet is exactly the same amount of time it would take to fall all the way through. So what that means is if you stood a, a hole going right the way through a planet with no air, no friction, nothing like that, and you had a tennis ball, and you're really good at throwing things, if you were able to brace yourself, throw the tennis ball at a phenomenal speed, so fast that you put it into orbit at the Earth's surface, the moment you've done that, you jump into the hole, you will fall all the way through the planet, and as you come up the other side of the planet, you'll be able to catch the ball as it comes flying in at zero altitude. Absolutely amazing. And if you do want to try this for yourself, of course, I mean, I'm all that practical advice here, you're going to need to know how fast to throw the ball. And if you do the calculations, the velocity of a ball at grazing altitude around the Earth is 7,909.5 meters per second. So when you throw the ball, it will be constantly going as your peak velocity on the way down. And this just blows my mind. It's so nice the way it drops down. I mean, it's a really good reminder that satellites, things in low Earth orbit, are just falling. There's the same physics going on behind the scenes, except they're falling in such a way that their uh, force making them fall perfectly matches their centrifugal force. And so if you want to work that out, and of course I highly recommend it, don't forget that your centrifugal force is your mass times your velocity squared divided by the radius that you're going around, and you want to make that equal to the force from the Earth, which is going to be big G uh, M, a big M on R squared. So you can already see there's some nice cancelling out that's going to go on over there. You're going to get some very similar equations and you'll be able to double check these numbers, see they're exactly the same. One final nice little bit is we had pi before, and as always, pi just leaps out of nowhere when you're doing otherwise unrelated maths. If you did the integral with a bunch of substitutions, you put some trigonomic substitutions in. But the reason why there's trigonometry going on behind the scenes here is simple harmonic oscillators are sine functions as they go backwards and forwards. Whereas this here is basically a sine function going up and down. This going around is a point on a circle, and the sine function is just one of the coordinates of a point going around on a circle. So as you fall through the Earth, your velocity, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then smaller, 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 is just the vertical component in the same direction as the direction you're falling of the satellite as it goes around, which is why they're equal exactly here when it's only got velocity in that direction, all the way back down again catch the ball, incredible. <laughs>